I grew up in a small town in Indiana, a little place called Floyd's Knobs, which is actually right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky, and namely Churchill Downs. So the Kentucky Derby is a big part of the culture, and really the Kentucky Derby was a chance to have uh, somewhat of a family reunion. So it was always great times. I actually went to Indiana University and studied sports broadcasting. I was lucky that they had that major, and that's what I always wanted to do. I mean, from a kid, I, I thought I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. I thought it would probably be basketball. Indiana's a basketball state, but I grew up watching TVG all the time. I love working at TVG. I knew everybody before I even signed on as a full-time employee because I watched the network so much. One angle that I like that I go back to is when you have a bad race with an obvious excuse. Let's say you have a sprinter that goes long, runs fifth, they come back sprinting. You don't care about the fifth anymore. You're sprinting. Of course, it's on the dirt. They try the grass, run eighth. Who cares about the eighth? You come back to the dirt, but here's the deal. That last line, betters overplay it quite often. So the bad race with the proper excuse, you'll always find value. Gamblers, and welcome to week two of the NFL season. We are here and we are happy to have you with us. You're watching More Ways to Win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, inside the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands, home to your New York Giants and New York Jets. And of course, I'm joined by our team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make some money. So now is the time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app so you're ready to place your bets with their advice. Plug in the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy. It's legal, guys. It's fun. And it's ready to party. Let's do it. They're ready. I'm ready. You're ready. And we're kicking things off with your New York Giants. Coming off a loss to the Steelers here at home on Monday Night Football in Week 1. They hit the road in Week 2. G-Men at Chicago this week looking to bounce back. New York's getting 5.5 points, guys. Andrew Filipponi coming to you first. Which way are you going? I like the Giants in this game, Lisa. If you would have told me Saquon Barkley would have amassed six rushing yards and the Giants offense would have managed 16 points against that bonded Steelers defense, I would have said you were crazy. So I actually think in a 10-point loss to Pittsburgh at home, there were some silver linings and some good things, Dave, that they can take into this game. In fact, I thought Daniel Jones against that pass rush looked pretty good in his first start of the year. And hitting the road is a good thing because Daniel Jones at home in his young career, eight touchdowns, 11 interceptions on the road, 18 touchdowns and only three interceptions. As a team, the Giants are 8-1 and one against the spread on grass over the last, I think, three years, including last year. Same situation. They went to Chicago. They were getting about the same points. They were a six-point underdog. They lost by five. They covered. So I think they'll do that again. All right, the Giants will be in Chicago, as you know. So let's head there now, where we find our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. Cole is the new face of Marquee Sports Network, guys, in Chicago, formerly with the NFL Network, knows all things Bears. So, Cole, bringing you in here, both guys are taking the Giants and the points. Which team do you have winning on Sunday, and, of course, by how many points? Uh, guys, I'd like to say I like where your head's at, but I, I can't really jive with that ideology. I mean, I'm going to have to go with the Bears all day, every day here. I mean, uh, they're going to build up the momentum of that win over Detroit. They're down 17 in the fourth. Mitchell Trubisky with three touchdowns in the fourth frame. I mean, he owns the Lions. He's 4-0, has a dozen touchdowns versus them. And then there's the Giants. I mean, you said Daniel Jones, he had showed, he showed some good signs. I mean, uh, oof, turning the ball over a pair of picks versus Pittsburgh and even if he limits the giveaway, Saquon, in that six-yard game, six yards. I mean, he's a thousand times better than that, but uh, hopefully not a whole lot versus the Bears. I have Chicago winning this one 21-3, Lisa. All right, momentum off that Lions road win there in week one. Uh, Giants fans, if you fade Cole and bet your team and the points, a $50 winning bet on New York Giants makes you more than $97. we got spread, money line, total, whatever line you like, they're all available right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app or right here in person at the Meadowlands. Everything open, ready for you on game day right here at the Meadowlands. Now let's get to the Jets, who will be playing their first game here at the Meadowlands on Sunday. After losing in week one in Buffalo, New York, now hosting the Niners right here, Dave. Jets are getting seven in their home debut. Do they cover? I think they will. And I'm always looking for the trends. Is a team a good home underdog? Is a team a bad road favorite? 
Well, I'm getting both here. The Jets as a uh, touchdown underdog at home, 12-5-1 against the spread the last 18 times that's occurred. And then the 49ers as a seven-point favorite or higher are only 3-10 and 10 in their last 13. So, But what about just more currently, like in this particular matchup, are the Niners really that good? They lose to Arizona at home. The Jets didn't necessarily look great, but, I mean, for me to be getting a touchdown at home, I'm going to take those points. Yeah, I think John Sheeran dropped the ball here, guys, and who am I to judge him, but I am, because I don't think there's a line high enough right now for the Jets. I would be shocked if there's any action coming in on New York in this game. Why would there be? Le'Veon Bell's on the IR, so the idea of him having a bounce-back season is now kaput. Uh, their offensive line is a total mess with new starters, and now you're telling me they're going to stop Nick Bosa and company coming off a loss to the Cardinals where they, where they blew it at home. I think the Jets might be uh, the worst team in football, and I don't think that they play a close game against the defending NFC champions. Give me San Francisco. Pony Colin cheering out already. We will hear from our odds maker in just a moment. Great stuff, guys. And Jets fans, you are getting seven points at home. A bet on that line, a winning $50 wager gets you more than $91. Of course, it's the FanDuel Sportsbook app or right here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. And better yet, if you are in New Jersey, if you're in the area, come see us here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. You can't be in the stadiums, guys, but you can still be a part of all the action right here. Watch the games on dozens of TVs complete with table service food and drink, and of course, make live sports bets on all your favorite teams and players right here. The FanDuel Sportsbook follows all state safety guidelines to ensure your safety while enjoying these games. It's the spot to be pre-game, during the game, post-game. The atmosphere here is amazing, so make sure to get here. Hang with us here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. We'll see you here Sunday and Monday, Thursday. It's open every day of the week, 10 to midnight. All right, now let's bring in our odds maker for the sports book, the guy that you're taking all of that money from, John Sheeran. John, you set the lines here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. You've got a lot of exclusive information into the betting markets. We're going to tap into that now, John. We have more information here after week one, right? Are there teams this week that FanDuel's taking a different view compared to what the market is saying now? Yeah, I think there's really two, Lisa, that really interest us. The first one is... Um, Absolutely, the, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Rams. Uh, one of the biggest issues normally from week one to two is an overreaction of a sample size of one. We know that that, is, that has always been the case. I think this year there may be more merit in it, but this one is one that really surprised us. We opened the Eagles as a three-and-a-half point favourite. Now, that might be one we might want to have back, Lisa, given all the injuries that the Eagles have. Um, but I think it's, you know... The Rams are coming off Sunday night football. They do have to travel across the country. And this line last night had moved all the way as far as the LA Rams is favoured by one and a half. Uh, all of the money has been for them, that is fair to say. But we're definitely going to take a stance against the Rams in this spot. We've moved the Eagles back uh, to a minus one and a half favourite. It hasn't really changed the flow of money. Um, but for us, that move from three to being an underdog at home was absolutely too far. So that's definitely one that we're going to be uh, on that side of. Uh, the other one I'd offer is the Vikings at the Colts. Um, we're heavily juiced, more heavily juiced in the market on, on Indianapolis at minus three, minus 115, Lisa. Um, I think the final result in Jacksonville with the Colts losing down there absolutely masked the way the game that the, the way that that game was played. The Indianapolis Colts never punted in the whole game. Uh, they outgained them by 200 yards, almost two yards per play. Um, so for me, that one looked like one that was absolutely... Um, you know, uh, not reflective of the way that the game was played effectively. And then Minnesota, you know, I think that 10-point loss to Green Bay absolutely flatters them. Uh, they were destroyed in that game by Aaron Rodgers. We know the corners had issues with Mike Zimmer's defense. And to me, that looks like one that is another one as well. We'll probably stay with the Colts uh, and try and attract more money in on Minnesota as the game gets closer. Great insight and a great point there, Sharon. We'll see you again in just a little bit. Uh, let's put some math to our money now. Get the analytics answer from our numbers guy, Ed Egros, joining us from Dallas. And, Ed, you comb the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You found a couple of lines that you really like. So now it's the time to expose them. Where do the numbers take us, Ed? Make our viewers some money this morning. I certainly will, Lisa. Let's start with the Super, 40, Super Bowl 49 rematch between the Patriots and Seahawks, who are giving four 
New look offense for both teams. For the Pats, Cam Newton had 15 rushing attempts more than any quarterback last week. He also netted eight first downs on the ground more than any gunslinger from week one. Led to the highest rushing success rate of any offense at 61.9%. Seattle passed on early downs in non-garbage time, the second most frequently of anyone in football at 64%, which is shocking because they were in control most of last week. And in the past few years, they have worried a lot about establishing the run. If Seattle is adapting to more of a pass-heavy approach as opposed to a run-heavy approach, then I think Russell Wilson and company will absolutely cook and they will win by more than a touchdown. And I'm going to fade you here just because one of the things I look for from week one to week two is when a team, the, the competition they're facing changes drastically. And I think that's what we see with Seattle. They're going from the Atlanta defense to the New England defense. And as far as defensive backfields and secondaries are concerned, I think this is a huge step up in competition, maybe worst to first or very close to that. And that's why I'm going to take the points in New England. And Pony, another bet that I think has good value here is the over between the Falcons and Cowboys. At the end of the season, we will anoint Atlanta and Dallas as two of the top 10 offenses in all of football. In week one, Matt Ryan had the third highest completed air yard average at 9.1 yards. He can continue throwing deep with weapons like Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones, who both ranked in the top six among all wideouts in receiving first downs. Cowboys, well, they had struggles with the Rams, but remember last year, Dak Prescott finished fourth in total QBR at 71.9, fifth in total pass points earned at 120, and fourth in average throw depth among all qualifiers at 9.1 yards. I think he will be okay. And we shouldn't worry too much about week one. It turns out that we that we saw more overs than unders in week one, suggesting offenses need less time to prepare, especially if there's some added continuity. So I think the over 53 is the best play here. I'm going to tell you, I like the over as well. I like the over in the Cowboy game last week, too, against the Rams. They had 27 combined at halftime, and things flattened out in the second half. I don't think things flatten out against the Falcons in this game. I think it's going to be a back-and-forth type of game. I'm with you. I like the over as well. All right, guys, you can bet the total. You can bet the spread as well, and this thing goes two ways. Giants fans, you can make a spread bet against the Cowboys and make some money here. A winning $50 bet on the Falcons to cover will pay out more than $93. And, of course, remember to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Use that promo code MoreWays1000 and check out all the Week 2 lines available right now. Spread, total, money line, all these wagers are available for all the markets. And if that money line bet is more your jam, then roll with it. And now is the time to do it. The FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you extra cash with the score 35 double up promotion. If you place a money line bet on a week two game and your team scores more than 35 points, the FanDuel Sportsbook will double your winnings up to 50 bucks. It's the score 35 double up promotion. Find it on the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. And New Jersey, you're a part of the fam, and we take care of our own. So this is a kind of a we've got your back segment, especially for those of you new to sports betting. Welcome. We're excited to have you. And Dave, we've talked about spreads, money line bets, and total wagers. Now let's really break those down, inform our bettors, and give them your best bet for each here in week two. What you got? Yeah. I'll give you a best bet with a simple explanation of what all of this means. So let's just start with a spread. The game I'm going to focus on is the Ravens and the Texans. Now, the Texans are getting seven points. That's the spread. So if I lose with the Texans by less than seven points, I'm going to cash my bet. So I'm going to bet the Texans plus seven points. If you have the Ravens, the Ravens have to win by more than seven to win. Now let's talk about a money line. Very simple. The spread does not matter. You're just simply saying this team has to win the game. The easiest pick of the week for me would be the Steelers. But you have to bet a little bit more to win a little bit less. $335 to win 100 but they don't have to cover the spread. If the Steelers win, I'm winning. And then let's talk about the total. Uh, let's just go to the game that Ed and I were just talking about, Atlanta and Dallas. 53 points total, both teams combined. So it could be 54 to nothing or it can be 28 to 27. You're adding up the two teams and that's what the over-under is. So I'm going to go over the 53 points in that game. 
Great stuff, Dave. And there you go, betters. Plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. For those of you new to betting, and also, of course, a ton of fun parlays, props, and alternative lines for those of you who've been at this a while. Check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. It is easy and fun to use with us here. All right, Dave, see you in just a minute here. Uh, time now to turn our attention to fantasy and talk about how you can turn $4 into $1 million. That's right, $1 million. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Winner gets a million bucks. The entry free fee truly is just $4. Now, finding the best values to insert into your DFS lineup is one of the keys to winning here. FanDuel Editor-in-Chief J.J. Zacharyson gives us his best values for Week 2. One of my favorite values here in Week 2 is at the tight end position, and it's Logan Thomas, who's $4,700. Look, Week one, Logan Thomas finished as a top 10 tight end. He ranked in the top 10 in routes run. He ranked in the top three in target share. There's a lot to like about what Logan Thomas did in week one against Philadelphia. Not a lot of alternatives in this Washington offense outside of Terry McLaurin. So Logan Thomas should be able to maintain a pretty high target share in this offense. Given the fact that he's the 24th most expensive tight end on this main slate, you have to get him into your lineup. I also like Paris Campbell, who's $5,300. He's going up against Minnesota, a team last week that gave up the most receptions and the third most yards to slot players. Paris Campbell in week one ran 95% of his routes from the slot. I think he can have a really big game and pay off that $5,300 price tag. And then finally, there's Jonathan Taylor in that same game against the Vikings. Taylor is only $5,800. Obviously, there's no Marlon Mack after he tore his Achilles. And when Marlon Mack went down in that game against Jacksonville last week, Jonathan Taylor had 10 carries to Naheem Hines' is three. And Taylor had a 13% target share in that game, which gave him six targets. I like Jonathan Taylor moving forward as a top 10 running back in fantasy football. The fact that you can get him under $6,000 this week is awesome. You've got to get him into your lineup. Thank you, JJ. Now make sure to use JJ's info for a shot at winning $1 million in the Sunday Million Contest on FanDuel.com. Again, just $4 to enter, and there's a prize pool of over $3 million at FanDuel.com. And there's even more money to be had. The Sunday Million is just one of many daily fantasy games offered at FanDuel.com. And, of course, on the FanDuel app, there are also a bunch of free GFS contests that you can enter right now. Yes, free and a ton of fun. You can also win super legit prizes, so why not give it a try, right? Just log on to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Sign up for your chance to win cash and prizes for free with our daily contests available each week. Back to sports betting now, and one of the best ways to cash in is by making a money line bet on an underdog to win the game outright. It's literally the easiest bet on the board, so let's look at these lines and place these wagers with our experts. And Dave, Pony, and Ed, got to get you guys back in here. I like to call it my money line money maker. And Dave, I'm coming to you first. Give me your hottest underdog bet for week two. Who's your money line money maker? Well, if anybody knows me, they know I love Las Vegas, and I like the Raiders. They, they go and play to Legion Stadium for the very first time here, coming off of a very nice win in Carolina, by the way, where they were one of the few offensive lines to put up a clean sheet and not allow a sack. I thought this game would be a lot closer to a pick. John Sheeran has uh, the Raiders getting plus 190, so that's going to be my upset of the week. Well, I'm going to take the Lions over the Packers. Kenny Galladay should be back in the Detroit lineup as the number one wide receiver. Playing the percentages, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to have another perfect game like he did against Minnesota. If he does, I'll tip my cap and just appreciate his greatness. And on the flip side, what are the odds a rookie drops a touchdown pass again wide open to cost Detroit a game? I think law of averages take over in Detroit on paper, in my opinion, is the better team. Tony and Dave, you talked about this game earlier, and I want to take it one step further. What happened to Saquon Barkley for the Giants Monday night was absolutely shocking. He had the fifth worst rushing yards over expected of any running back in football. That's not going to happen again. Bears only stormed back to beat the Lions because of major defensive injuries, and they were forced to throw a lot. Also got a pick in a short field. I have the Giants upsetting the Bears. There you go. All that plus money, guys. Head to the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Take a look at the odds for each matchup here in week two. See if there's a money line bet that you like. Picking an underdog means plus money. Giants fans, tail end there. Get $140 on a $50 bet if New York beats Chicago. 
That game, of course, being played in Chicago on Sunday. So let's head there to the Windy City and bring back in Cole Wright to talk division winners here. Cole, this is one of the team futures bets that's still on the board here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. And Cole, let's keep the focus on the New York market here. And let's start with the Giants and the NFC East. New York currently plus 1,500 to win the division. The long shot right now with those numbers. After what you saw, Cole, in week one, which team do you think ends up taking the top spot in the NFC East? Well, I don't know if week one sample size really gave me the answer, but I see the Philadelphia Eagles going out there and winning this division. I mean, last year the division was won by Philadelphia at 9-7, and seven, and I, I just don't think the other teams right now have, have enough to compete within the division, so it's going to be a, another team that's under at least 10 wins to get this one. Maybe that's Philadelphia. Maybe it isn't, but at least with where I'm standing, I see the Philadelphia Eagles getting the best over there in that division, Lisa. All right, now let's go to the odds for the AFC East here. Really interesting line here with the Bills and Patriots tied at plus 110. When you look down, the Dolphins and Jets, East there are plus 1,200. Uh, Cole, which team do you have winning this division? Well, I have New England winning this one. I think it pretty much goes without saying. What we've seen New England do over, over the last 20 years, I know they did it with Tom Brady, but it seems to be a well-oiled machine. Cam Newton, we saw what he was able to do in week one and go out there and I know it was against the Miami Dolphins but 21 to 11 and Cam running the ball like he did during his MVP season it's going to be bad news for the Bills for the Dolphins for the Jets I just think the whole division has been put on notice and it's going to be New England once again even though Tom Brady is down there in Tampa Bay struggling just a little bit yeah, the bones and the structure of that place still intact. All right, you can get some great value with these futures bets, and they're still available right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Check out the Team Futures tab. You can bet on which team will win the division, and, of course, a bunch of other Team Futures as well. FanDuel Sportsbook app or right here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, live and in person here at the Meadowlands. All right, guys, easy, legal, live, tons of fun with us. I've mentioned that a few times here. Don't have a FanDuel Sportsbook account? What are you waiting for? If you sign up now, FanDuel is sweetening the pot. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Yep, just download the app. Sign up for your new account using promo code MoreWays1000. This means if your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel will refund you up to 1000 bucks. Insight credit. So I say let's party. Let's throw this thing down. Dave Pony Ed, you have up to 1000 bucks to place on a risk-free bet. So let's make our viewers some money here. Give me a bet on the Vandal Sportsbook app that you're hammering that's going to lead to a big payout. Dave, what you got? I'm going to stick with the uh, total that I like the most, and that is the Falcons and the Cowboys. But instead of betting 1,000 on over 53 and winning a little bit less than 1,000, you can do the alternate total. So I'm, I think that's the 10 touchdown game. I'm going to buy this all the way up to over 68 and a half, and now I'm getting $6,000 for my 1,000 instead. So I think this game's going to explode. Same game parlay option at FanDuel. They do it, nobody else does. And I'm looking at the Miami Buffalo game where I think the over and Miami are the picks here. Put that together for a two-team parlay. Volatility, that's what I'd like to say about Ryan Fitzpatrick. His job's on the line. I think he bounces back in a big way for Miami on Sunday. The San Francisco 49ers will not make the playoffs. We need to be honest about Jimmy Garoppolo. Last week, he faced an average Arizona defense, and he still finished 26th in EPA CPOE composite. And he had the worst bad throw percentage of any quarterback at 33.3%. Plus, George Kittle is dealing with a knee injury. They're running out of weapons. My $1,000 risk-free bet earns me $1,740 in profit. And now Richard Sherman on IR as well. Great stuff, guys. Uh, gamblers, make sure to sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account right now to place your bet. Take their advice as well. And remember, use the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. Again, easy, legal, and live. So take your winnings if you hit. Just get your money back if you don't, because that is how we roll. All right, great stuff by those guys. Got to bring in our big hitter here, John Sheeran. They're placing those bets risk-free. Now, what we need from you is your exclusive insight here on the hottest bets at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. So I want to know which teams are taking the most actions for Week 2. It's probably pretty obviously. So San Francisco and, and New York Jets, the guy spoke about it earlier. Uh, San Fran are a, a touchdown favorite. Uh, to this point is the only bet I've seen any money for. We've taken about 95% of the money on the road favorite. Um, in terms of bet counts, it's over 3,500 
sorry, over eight and a half thousand to three hundred and fifty bets in favour of San Francisco. The Jets looked horrible last week. They were obviously flattered by the margin of defeat in Buffalo. I think the matchup for Jimmy G looks actually a good spot. I know Ed is a little bit down on him. I know we've got Sherman on IR. Um, but this looks a really terrible Jets team, and I think they're going to struggle with San Francisco, particularly maybe on the ground. Uh, if you do like San Francisco, even without potentially George Kittle, uh, I would definitely look at taking that line sooner rather than later. I expect that to move towards the Niners. Uh, the Chiefs are the other one, Lisa. Their offense looks so efficient in week one, back as if there was almost no break whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, the Charger offense looked pretty anemic, to be honest. Um, they managed to beat the Bengals, but to be fair, um, I don't think there's any way they can keep up with the Chiefs. This is one that will also, I think, continue to float uh, up from the 8.5 that it is already. 98% of the money that we've seen so far on Kansas, Lisa. No doubts. Chiefs are scary, even after that week one win. All right. And remember, guys, if you're in the New Jersey area, come see us here at the Fandle Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. We'd love to have you and host you here. You can't be in the stadiums. We all know that. But you can still be a part of all the action right here. Watch the games on dozens of TVs. I'm telling you, I'm standing right here in the sportsbook. They've got table service. You can order food and drink. And, of course, live sports bets on all your favorite teams and players. The Fandle Sportsbook, of course, follows all state safety guidelines to ensure your safety while you enjoy these games. It's the spot to be pre-game during the game and of course post-game so make sure to get here. Hang with us at the Fandle Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. Of course, before you place all of your bets here at the FanDuel Sportsbook in New Jersey or right there on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, it is important to know how injuries may impact key players here in Week 2. Pro Football Doc David Chow takes a look at some of the big names who are playing hurt and how those injuries could affect their play this weekend. It's only Week 2. Lots of stars injured. Let's start out in San Francisco where 49ers tied in. George Kittle hyperextended his left knee again. Last Halloween he did it, ended up missing two weeks. He finished the game this week, said he was fine after the game. However, he is slated not to practice at all this week. This puts Sunday into question for him. Out in Pittsburgh, James Conner has several concerns and it's really not his ankle. Mild ankle sprain, he should be fine. Benny Snell Jr. may take some snaps from him, but also the right side of the Steelers offensive line with Zach Banner telling, tearing his ACL and the right guard being injured as well. Out in Denver, Philip Lindsay has a mild turf toe. Normally mild is something that you can play through, but for him it will be very difficult because of the type of running back that he is. He really relies on his speed cuts and quickness, and that can be slowed down by the turf toe, even if it's mild. So we'll have to look at him and be careful with him for a couple of weeks. All right, thank you for that, Doc. And, of course, the completion of week one also means Super Bowl odds, guys, are moving. You guys see the favorites on your screen here. But there, there were a few teams that played really well that may be sneaking into this Super Bowl conversation, even though it is still very early in the season. All right, this bet is under the championship tab on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So let's make some money here, guys. Pony, give us your pick. Who's winning this thing? Lisa, I'm not backing up my original prediction. I loved what I saw from Arizona in week one in San Francisco. What a debut for DeAndre Hopkins. I'm sticking with him. Well, the Chiefs, then, that will be me at the plus 550 because they're just absolutely unstoppable. Uh, what they did last week was phenomenal. And what Pat Mahomes said after the game, you never know who it's going to be. So many offensive weapons. I think the Chiefs crush. I'm still rolling with New Orleans, folks. I think in the AFC, it is the Chiefs and the Ravens. The Saints have a much easier path to the Super Bowl, so I'm sticking with my Saints. I'll tell you what, those Chiefs so elevated expectations in that Thursday night game. It is early in the season. There's still great value in placing a Super Bowl bet, and here's what it means in dollars and cents for all of you there. A $50 bet on Ponies, Cardinals, or Chiefs here Super Bowl pick means you would take home more than $1,700 if they win the championship. You can place your bets now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app or right here in person at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. And as always, thanks for hanging with us and watching FanDuel Sportsbook's more ways to win. Take our experts' tips and make yourself some cash. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's free, easy, and legal. And we've got extra love for our new users. Use that promo code MOREWAYS1000. Get that risk-free bet up to $1,000, and you can do it right now. Of course, follow us on Twitter as well, at MoreWaysToWinTV, for bonus tips and info 
throughout the week. Enjoy the games, everybody. We'll see you next week. Fund your account with TVG Betcash, a credit or debit card, PayPal, a TVG prepaid card, Green Dot Money Pack, or Pay Near Me. Fund your account now. TVG.com. fans welcome to week two of the nfl season you're watching more ways to win happy to have you with us i'm your host lisa kearney inside the fandle sportsbook here at the meadowlands i am joined of course by our team of sports betting experts these guys are here to help you make some money so get yourselves ready download the fandle sportsbook app right now to place your bets with their advice. Plug in the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy, it's legal, it's fun, so let's get this party started. They're ready, I'm ready, you're ready, and we're kicking things off with your Pittsburgh Steelers coming off a road win right here at the Meadowlands against the Giants on Monday night. Uh, Pittsburgh is now at home hosting the Broncos this week. Steelers are giving seven and a half points. Andrew Filipponi, talk to your people here. You are the radio yep. voice there in Pittsburgh. Which way are you going on this matchup? Well, they're going to cover that line. Dave, we had it wrong. You said that Ben was going to look like a can of old rusty iron city beer in week one. He looked like a wine from, uh, from Napa. He aged so nicely. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. The time off did him so, some good. Some of the most efficient football we've seen from Ben in a week one. In fact, it's the first time since 2008 he didn't throw a pick in week one and now Dave the Broncos are going to be without their number one corner AJ Bouye for this game Chris Harris is gone they got rid of him this offseason I don't see them slowing down these Steelers wide receivers and that's why I'm taking Pittsburgh to cover a big number come on he was rusty he started out a little bit slow but he did get into a good groove there and he definitely did well with the three touchdowns another thing I'm on record with and you know this I had Vic Fangio to win coach of the year and I realized inside the two minute warning last week I would have been better off lighting that money on fire with not calling any timeouts there so you have a coaching mismatch you have a quarterback mismatch and Denver's not good on the road anyways nine and 17 against the spread their last 26 I think the Steelers roll Big number. Dave's still taking it. Let's get into X's and O's football take on this matchup now. For now, we head to Chicago and our NFL analyst, Cole Wright, joining us. The new face of Marquee Sports Network, of course, formerly of the NFL Network. Cole, uh, both guys are taking Steelers, giving the points here. Uh, which team do you have winning on Sunday? And, of course, by how many points? Well, gentlemen, I like the Steelers and I like the points because young quarterbacks, they have a big problem winning in Pittsburgh, especially if you're younger than 23. Only four quarterbacks have done that before. And Drew Locke, well, he's 23, and it hasn't happened in the last 15 years. And plus, this, this Denver team, they can't close out close games. We saw them lose to Tennessee with less than a minute. And then there's the Steelers, which, oh, by the way, they look like the 2018 version on Monday Night Football. Big Ben spreading it around, eight different receivers catching passes. Juju with the pair of touchdowns. So all seems to be well in the Steel City. So don't worry about how solid Jerry, Judy, and Melvin Gordon look in the loss. Or forget the fact that Ben Roethlisberger's 3-6 and six lifetime versus Denver because I see Pittsburgh 
coming up huge in this one. Dave and Pony, you have to like where I'm at. 34 to 17, Pittsburgh, they're getting the win. Yeah, giving seven and a half still uh, steep line. But Steelers fans, go ahead and bet and uh, cheer for your team. If you bet the spread, think your team will cover. A $50 winning bet on Pittsburgh wins you 100 bucks. It's a FanDuel Sportsbook app. All right, let's move on now. Let's get to the Eagles, who lost a tough division game in Washington last week. They're looking to bounce back here against the Rams at home in Philly here in week two. The Eagles are giving one and a half points here. Dave, really tight line. Can the Eagles cover that number? After what I saw in week one in Washington, you know, their offensive line gave up eight sacks. They just have a tendency to struggle early on in the year. And I was looking for trends as a sports better. I want to know who's good early in the year and who's not. Well, the Rams, you look at 2018, they covered their first three games. 2019, they covered their first three games. 2020, they already covered by beating the Cowboys. And the Eagles are 2-7 and seven against the spread in the last nine games in September. So the trend here for me, Pony, is that the Rams are just sharper right now than the Eagles. Yep. Dave, let's get your trends headed in the right direction. I feel a bounce back week for you. I like this pick a lot. I'm with you. I'm going to take the Rams. I don't see how they block Aaron Donald. Did you see him on Sunday night? The guy was picking up two Cowboys offensive linemen at a time and throwing them to the turf. Miles Sanders is probably going to play, uh, but is, are there going to be holes for him to run through? So, I think the Rams, again, two consecutive weeks, they were an underdog at home against Dallas, and I think they're undervalued in this matchup as well. Mm -hmm. And this line has already moved quite a bit. Thanks, guys. Eagles fans, bet with your heart and back it with those stats those guys just mentioned. Wager on Philly, giving one and a half, and a winning $50 bet gets you about 90 bucks. It's the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And let's bring in the odds maker uh, here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, the guy that you're taking all of that money from, uh, John Sheeran himself. I like to call him the godfather. Sheeran, you've set the lines here. You've got a lot of exclusive information into the betting market. So I want to ask you, we have more information after what we saw in week one. Are there teams this week that FanDuel's taking a different view compared to what the market is saying? That the two guys are in love with the Rams. That's exactly what I want. An overreaction from week one to week two. Look, we hung this at the Eagles at minus three and a half. It's probably one we wish we could take back. Uh, not taking into account enough of the injured Eagles. Obviously, there's a concern around Aaron Donald. He caused havoc on Sunday night against the Cowboys. We know Carson Wentz was terrible under pressure. If he can do that again, then maybe I can see the case for the Rams. But for me, this is just too much of a line movement. Like I said, we opened this at three and a half. We were all the way to uh, the Rams being favoured last night, but we actually took a stance against that. We're giving all the betters plus money on the Rams to win on the money line and plus one and a half points on the spread. I want as much money as I can get on the Los Angeles Rams this week. Uh, the other one I would offer you, Lisa, is the Colts. Uh, we, we were plus three, uh, but we're more heavily juiced in the market on, on Indianapolis. Sorry, minus three Indianapolis. Um, for me, this is, again, another overreaction. If you look at the box score compared to the final score, you'll see that the Colts were probably very, very unlucky to lose that game in Jacksonville. They outgained the Jaguars by 200 total yards, almost two yards per play in the game. They never punted once in the game either. For me, that was a game Indianapolis should have put to bed very easily. Obviously, Minshew went 19 for 20. The other side is the Vikings against the, Cow or the Green Bay Packers last week. They lost that game by 10 points, but it does not reflect uh, the, way the, game that was the way that game was played. They should have lost by multiple touchdowns and we're very flattered to get back within 10. Um, so for me, uh, they're the two that we're looking to aggressively take on. So favoring Indianapolis uh, and favoring Philadelphia. Great insight, here, and we'll see you again in just a little bit. Thank you. Let's put some math to our money now and get the analytics answer from our numbers guy, Ed Egros, here joining us from Dallas. And Ed, you call him the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You found a couple of lines that you really like. Let's expose them here. Where do the numbers take us, Ed? Well, let's start with Baltimore giving seven to Houston. And I feel bad for the Texans because they will be the greatest 0-2 team in football. Houston was actually outstanding on the ground game with the second highest rush EPA in week one at .31. Credit David Johnson for that. His yards after contact per rushing attempt comes in third best at 4.1 yards. Deshaun Watson's mobility, I think, will only help that mark going forward. Ravens were not as effective running the football, but they didn't need to be. Even though Lamar Jackson felt the third highest pressure rate at 31 percent, he still went nine for 10 on throws of 10 plus yards. He finished with the most completed air yards for completion attempt at 10.1 yards. This guy is playing out of his mind right now. 
he even though watch this line carefully right now it's at seven i have the ravens winning by eight so they're covering now but if this line moves too much later i will take the other side yeah i'm gonna fade you on this ed you just said razor thin there the margin for error for for baltimore i think this line is an overreaction to week one uh, houston had the toughest game uh, kansas city on the road and Baltimore got to play the Browns, and Cleveland did not disappoint. They picked up right where they left off last year, a very dysfunctional unit. So I think Houston's a big value play here, getting a touchdown. Tony, another bet I like that has some good value here is the over between the Falcons and Cowboys. At the end of the season, I think we will say that Atlanta and Dallas are two of the top eight offenses in all of the National Football League. In week one, Matt Ryan, well, he had the third highest completed air yard average at 9.1 yards. He can continue throwing deep with weapons like Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones. They both ranked in the top six among all wideouts and receiving first downs. Cowboys, yes, they had struggles with the Rams. But remember, last year, Dak Prescott was amazing. Fourth in total QBR at 71.9. Fifth in total pass points earned at 120. Fourth in average throw depth among all qualifiers at 9.1 yards. I think he will be okay. One trend to keep in mind here is that we saw more overs than unders in week one, in large part because offenses with some continuity continue to click. I think both offenses will continue to click. So I have the over 53 here. I'm going to tell you big time on this one. I think this is the back and forth game, possession to possession. These teams are going to match each other. Plenty of touchdowns here. I love the over. All right, lots of offense coming at us. Thanks, guys. Hey, Steelers and Eagles fans, you can make a total bet there like those guys were talking about. But you can also make a spread bet against the Cowboys and make a lot of money. All right, so let's do that. A winning $50 bet on the Falcons to cover will pay out more than $93. Remember, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. More ways, 1,000. Check out all those Week 2 lines. It's available right now. So we said spread, total, money line, all these wagers available for all the markets. And if that money line bet is more your jam, then roll with it. Now's the time to do it. FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you extra cash with the Score 35 double-up promotion which means if you place a money line bet on a week two game and your team scores more than 35 points, the FanDuel Sportsbook will double your winnings up to 50 bucks. It's the score 35 double promotion. Find it on the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. Pennsylvania, you're a part of the fam and we take care of our own. So this is a we've got your back segment, especially for those of you new to sports betting. Welcome. We're excited you're with us. And Dave, I'm bringing you in here for this. We've talked about spreads, money line bets and total wagers as well. Now let's break those down, inform our bettors and give them your best bet for each here in week two. Yeah, we know there are people that have been betting sports for years and others that might be tuning in the first time today and want to learn what all this lingo means. So let's start with a spread, and we'll go with the uh, Ravens and the Texans. The spread on this game is seven. That means that Baltimore needs to win by more than seven to cover. I actually like the Texans, so if they lose by less than seven, I'm going to cash my bet. Now, as far as a money line, the spread is not involved. You're just picking a team that's going to win the game outright. So I'm going to use the Steelers as my example, as my easiest winner of the week. If they win by one, I'm fine. They don't have to cover the spread. But you have to bet a little bit more, $335 to win 100 on the money line. And then let's talk about a total. Let's go back to the game Ed and I were talking about Atlanta and Dallas. The over-under or the total is 53 points. You take the total combined point between both teams. So it could be 54 to nothing or it could be 28 to 27. Either way, that's going to go over the 53 points. Great stuff, Dave. There you go. Plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app for those of you new to betting. And also, as Dave mentioned, a ton of fun parlays, props, and alternative lines for those of you who've been at this for a while. All right, check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. It's easy to use and it tons of fun with us. And better yet, if you're in the New Jersey area, come see us here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. You can't be in the stadiums right now, but you can still be a part of all the action, and you can do it right here. Watch the games on dozens of TVs all around me. I'm standing right here in the Sportsbook. We've got table service, food, and drink, and, of course, make live sports bets on all your favorite teams and players. The FanDuel Sportsbook follows all state safety guidelines to ensure your safety while enjoying the games. It's the spot to be pregame, during the game, Post game, so make sure to get here. Hang with us at the Fatal Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. 
Of course, it's time now to turn our attention to fantasy and talk about how you can turn $4 into $1 million. That's right. One million dollars. All you had to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Winner gets a million bucks. The entry fee truly just four dollars. Finding the best values to insert into your DFS lineup is, of course, one of the keys to winning this thing. FanDuel editor in chief JJ Zacharyson gives us his best values for week two. One of my favorite values here in week two is at the tight end position, and it's Logan Thomas, who's $4,700. Look, week one, Logan Thomas finishes as a top 10 tight end. He ranked in the top 10 in routes run. He ranked in the top three in target share. There's a lot to like about what Logan Thomas did in week one against Philadelphia. Not a lot of alternatives in this Washington offense outside of Terry McLaurin, so Logan Thomas should be able to maintain a pretty high target share in this offense. Given the fact that he's the 24th most expensive tight end on this main slate, you have to get him into your lineup. I also like Paris Campbell, who's $5,300. He's going up against Minnesota, a team last week that gave up the most receptions and the third most yards to slot players. Paris Campbell in week one ran 95% of his routes from the slot. I think he can have a really big game and pay off that $5,300 price tag. And then finally, there's Jonathan Taylor in that same game against the Vikings. Taylor is only $5,800. Obviously, there's no Marlon Mack after he tore his Achilles. And when Marlon Mack went down in that game against Jacksonville last week, Jonathan Taylor had 10 carries to Naheem Hines' three. And Taylor had a 13% target share in that game, which gave him six targets. I like Jonathan Taylor moving forward as a top 10 running back in fantasy football. The fact that you can get him under $6,000 this week is awesome. You've got to get him into your lineup. It's great stuff, JJ, as always. Thank you. Make sure to use JJ's info for a shot now at winning $1 million in the Sunday Million Contest on FanDuel.com. Just $4 to enter. There's a prize pool of over $3 million. FanDuel.com and, of course, the FanDuel app. And there's even more money to be had here. The Sunday Million is just one of many daily fantasy games offered at FanDuel.com and on the app. There are also a bunch of free DFS contests you can enter right now. Yes, free and a ton of fun. You can also win super legit prizes. So why not give it a try, right? Just log on to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Sign up for your chance to win cash and prizes for free with our daily contests available each week. Let's get back to sports betting now. One of the best ways to cash in is by making a money line bet on an underdog to win the game outright. It's literally the easiest bet on the board. So let's look at these lines and place these bets with our experts. Dave, Pony, and Ed, get back in here. Uh, I like to call it my money line money maker. Dave, I'm going to start with you. Give me your hottest underdog bet for week two. Who's your money line money maker? Well, anybody that knows me knows I love to go to Las Vegas. Guess who's going to Las Vegas for the first time? The Raiders. They have their home opener here at Allegiant Stadium. Owner Mark Davis calls it the Death Star, where opponents' dreams come to die. The Saints' dreams are going to die uh, at Las Vegas for the first time. So I thought the Raiders looked good, too. In week number one, no sacks allowed, high-flying win at Carolina. This is a good bet for me, plus 190. Yeah, I'm going to take Detroit plus 225 uh, in Green Bay at Lambeau Field. Overreactions to week one, we've been talking about it. Now the narrative has changed on Green Bay. Suddenly people are saying taking Jordan Love and not giving Aaron Rodgers an extra weapon motivated him to be a better quarterback. Uh, I'm not buying it. One amazing performance against Minnesota, but I suspect the Packers will come back down to earth on Sunday. Two teams with fluky performances in week one. I'm going to go with the Giants over the Bears. What happened to Saquon Barkley Monday night was absolutely shocking. Fifth worst rushing yards over expected of any running back in football. That is not going to happen again. Bears only stormed back to beat the Lions because the Lions suffered some major defensive injuries. They got a pick, short fields. I don't see that happening again. I have the Giants upsetting the Bears outright. All right, Ed, making friends here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. Uh, head to the FanDuel Sportsbook app now for all of you and take a look at the odds for each matchup. See something there you like on the money line. What do you like? Pick an underdog. It means plus money. You can find it right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Let's get back to Chicago now and check in with our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. Cole, let's jump ahead and talk division winners here. This is one of the team futures bets that's still on the board here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. 
Let's keep the focus on the Pennsylvania market here, and let's start with the Steelers and the AFC North. The Steelers are plus 290 to win the, the division. Do you think Pittsburgh can end up taking that top spot, Cole? Well, Lisa, I said I think that the Steelers may win 10 to 11 games this season, but uh, I'd be a, a maniac not to pick the Baltimore Ravens to go out there and win this division. Did you see the MVP taking on the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield? I mean, 38 to 6, that cat was out there essentially throwing hot grits on the Browns. I mean, you look at his numbers, 20 or 25, 275 yards, three touchdowns. J.K. Dobbins, he was rolling the youngster with a pair of touchdowns and seven receivers involved for Lamar Jackson. And we see him tap into those those long passes and flick that ball down the field. Well, I think that the Baltimore Ravens are going to win this division easily, 13 and three. So that's where I'm sitting at. The favorite there at minus 220. All right, Cole, let's move on. Let's go to the odds for the NFC East here. Focus on Philly's chances. Cowboys are the favorite here with the Eagles' odds at plus 165. You see them on their screen. Uh, Cole, do you see Philly making a run after what we saw in week one? Do you think they'll win this division? Absolutely, Lisa. This is probably the least competitive division in all of the National Football League right now. I, I know that the Dallas Cowboys may be favored, but after all, they are the Dallas Cowboys, their fan base. We know it's sprawling, but this is a division last year where the division champion was 9-7, and seven, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles. So if anyone knows how you can basically trip your way towards the finish line, it's Eagles fans. And I see the Eagles going out there, but they have to get that offensive line healthy. They have to keep Carson Wentz healthy and upright. And if they do all those things, then maybe they'll come away with the division title once again. Yeah, I tell you what, Cole, I'd be failing you. This is some of the safest plus money that you can have right now. Uh, thank you, Cole. We'll see you again in a little bit. Uh, to make this bet, check out the Team Futures tab. You can bet on which team will win the division and a bunch of other Team Futures as well. It's all in the FanDuel Sportsbook app. All right, easy, legal, live, and tons of fun with us. Don't have a FanDuel Sportsbook account yet? What are you waiting for? If you sign up now, FanDuel is sweetening the pot. New users, get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Yep, just download the app, sign up for an account using the promo code right there on your screen. More ways, 1000 If your first bet does not hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel is going to refund you up to $1,000 in site credit. All right. So let's party. Bring in my guys, Dave, Pony, Ed. You have up to $1,000 to place on a risk-free bet. Let's make our viewers a whole lot of money here. Give me a bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook app that you're hammering that's going to lead to a big payout. Dave, I'm coming to you first. Well, I love the over in the Atlanta-Dallas game. I could bet the 1000 and win just slightly less than that by betting the over 53. But I'm greedy, and I think this game is going to be a 10-touchdown game. I think this game is going to get into the 70s, so I'm going to bet the alternate total by it all the way up to over 68.5 points. If they get 69 or more, my $1,000 is going to win me 6000 instead. Well, I think the Bills have tricked people into thinking that they're a legitimate uh, dark horse contender in the AFC because they got to play the Jets at home. Now they got to go to Miami. Ryan Fitzpatrick, people are already calling for Tua. We know he can throw for four interceptions. He can also throw for four touchdowns. I think he gets hot. That's why I'm going with the same game parlay. A $1,000 risk-free bet on Miami to cover six points and the go game to go over. You win over $3,000 if you make this wager today. Two goals with this segment. One, to make some money. Two, to get Dave and Pony to gasp audibly. And here we go. The San Francisco 49ers will not make the playoffs. We need to be honest about Jimmy Garoppolo. Last week, he faced an average Arizona defense, and he still finished 26 out of 32 quarterbacks in EPA CPOE composite. He had the worst bad throw percentage at 33.3%. George Kittle is hurt with that knee injury. He may still play, but the San Francisco 49ers are running out of weapons. My $1,000 risk-free bet will get me $1,740 in profit. You know what, our director, Doug, is crying in the control room right now at that pick. All right, guys, uh, make sure to sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account right now to place your bet. And remember, use the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. Again, easy, legal, live. Take your winnings if you hit and just get your money back if you don't, because that is how we roll here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Great stuff by those guys. Got to ring in John Shearer and get more good stuff from our odds maker here. John, they are placing those bets risk-free. What I need from you is the exclusive insight on the hottest bets right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Which teams are taking the most action here in week, in week two? 
Uh, it looks pretty obvious that nobody understand, understood half of what Ed said, Lisa. All those random letters after each other. Uh, the general public are all over Jimmy G in San Francisco. They're favored by a touchdown. Um, at this point, it's literally the only bet I've seen. Of the total bets that we've taken so far in this game, 8,600 of them on San Francisco to cover the touchdown spread, uh, just 347 on the Jets. That tells you everything you need to know about where the public is going. So that's absolutely by far and away the most one-sided uh, market that we have. The Jets looked terrible last week, uh, really flattered to only lose uh, by 10 points against uh, the Buffalo Bills as well. So uh, not surprising to see everyone on the Niners. Uh, the Chiefs is the other one, Lisa. They were back. The offense looked like it didn't have an off-season at all, so efficient. Uh, on the other hand, the Chargers' offense, uh, despite winning over uh, Cincinnati, looked pretty anemic in week one. Um, I don't think there's any way they'll be able to keep up uh, with the Chiefs, and neither does any of the betters. 98% uh, of the money for Kansas in that one as well, Lisa. So they're the two really hot ones. All right, great stuff, Sharon. See you again in a little bit. And then a reminder, if you're in the New Jersey area, come see us here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. It'd be our pleasure to host you. You can't be in the stadiums right now, but you can still be a part of all the action right here. Watch the games on dozens of TVs complete with table service. That means food and drink. And, of course, make live sports bets on all your favorite teams and players. The FanDuel Sportsbook follows all state safety guidelines to ensure your safety while enjoying the games. It's the spot to be pre-game, during the game, post-game, and make sure to get here and hang with us at the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands. It would be our pleasure to see you here with us. Now, before you make your bet at the FanDuel Sportsbook here in New Jersey or on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, it's important to know and understand how injuries may imp impact key players here in week two. Pro football doc David Chow takes a look at some of the big names here who are playing hurt and how those injuries could affect their play this weekend. It's only week two, lots of stars injured. Let's start out in San Francisco where 49ers tight end George Kittle hyperextended his left knee again. Last Halloween he did it, ended up missing two weeks. He finished the game this week, said he was fine after the game. However, he is slated not to practice at all this week. This puts Sunday into question for him. Out in Pittsburgh, James Conner has several concerns and it's really not his ankle. Mild ankle sprain, he should be fine. Benny Snell Jr. may take some snaps from him, but also the right side of the Steelers' offensive line with Zach Banner telling, tearing his ACL and the right guard being injured as well. Out in Denver, Philip Lindsay has a mild turf toe. Normally, mild is something that you can play through, but for him, it will be very difficult because of the type of running back that he is. He really relies on his speed cuts and quickness and that can be slowed down by the turf toe, even if it's mild. So we'll have to look at him and be careful with him for a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks for the insight, Doc. And the completion of week one means Super Bowl odds are moving, guys. Uh, you see the favorites on your screen, but there were a few teams that really played pretty well that may be sneaking into this Super Bowl conversation. Even though it is still early in the season, we're here sitting here at week two. This bet is under the championship tab on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can bet it right now. So let's make some money. A pony, who's winning this thing? Yeah, I like the Cardinals preseason. I love them now. Uh, the bandwagon is starting to fill up, though, and the odds have moved in my direction a little bit here. Very popular team after their San Francisco victory. And it'll only get uh, more popular as they continue to roll with Kyler Murray at quarterback. Nobody's sneaking into anything. The Chiefs are absolutely dominant this year in the NFL. Unstoppable. I love what uh, Patrick Mahomes said after the game last week. He said you never know who it's going to be with this team, just referencing the so many offensive weapons that they have. I love the Chiefs, even though the odds are only 550. I still love the Saints here. Even though you might think that Drew Brees is a little bit washed up, Taysom Hill can still throw it or run draws on his own. Plus, Jameis Winston can also make this offense tougher to game plan in case he starts to get incorporated into this offense somehow. Nothing is stopping Sean Payton from getting creative with a number of different quarterbacks. Defense is opportunistic. Still love New Orleans. Tell you what, guys, people are loving my Chiefs, and I tell you, the composure from that 25-year-old quarterback even after that week one is just very promising. So I don't mind if you join the bandwagon and put your money on that favorite there. It's early in the season, still great value in placing a Super Bowl bet. Here's what it means in dollars and cents. $50 bet on Ponies Cardinals. 
to win the Super Bowl means you take home more than $1,700 if they win the championship. You can place your bets now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And that'll do it for us for this week. Thanks for hanging with us and watching FanDuel Sportsbook's More Ways to Win. We'll be right back here next week. Enjoy the week two games and good luck with your bets. Time for new reading classes? Go to readers.com. Choose from hundreds of styles and colors for under $20. And now, enter this exclusive TV coupon code at checkout to save up to 40%. That's readers.com. Real players, real stories. First I saw the commercial, then my friend recommended Betfair, and I signed up that day. On Betfair Casino, you can play your favorite casino games anywhere in New Jersey, including blackjack, roulette, slots, and more. It's just so much fun. When I play online, I prefer Betfair. No long drives to the casino. No hassle. If you're still driving to the casinos, save the gas and tolls. Put that money in your pocket. Joining is easy. Go to BetfairCasino.com or download the app and sign up today. I saw the commercial on TV, downloaded the app, and within minutes, I was playing. And now, when you join, you can play your first day risk-free up to $200. You sign up, you play your first day risk-free. How great is that? I've played those other online casinos, but for me, Betfair is the best. I wish I signed up earlier. It's just so much fun. Join the fun today at Betfair Casino. Fund your account with TVG Betcash, a credit or debit card, PayPal, a TVG prepaid card, Green Dot Money Pack, or Pay Near Me. Fund your account now. TVG.com. What up, Bears and Colts fans? Welcome to week two of the NFL season. You're watching More Ways to Win. Thanks for hanging with us. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, inside the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands. We appreciate you being with us here in week two, and I am joined by our team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make some money. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now. Place your bets with their advice throughout the show. Plug in the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy, it's legal, it's fun. So let's get this party started. They're ready, I'm ready, you're ready. In Illinois, we're kicking things off with your Chicago Bears, set to host the New York Giants at Soldier Field on Sunday. The Bears roll in with a bit of momentum here, coming off that come from behind win in Detroit last week. Chicago is giving five and a half points to the Giants here in this matchup. Andrew Filipponi, which way are you going? Well, I'm taking the Giants, absolutely, Lisa. Uh, last week, uh, the Bears gave up six yards per carry to Adrian Peterson. And now here comes Saquon Barkley off of the worst rushing performance of his entire career. Uh, if AP can do it at 68 years old against uh, the Bears defense, I'm convinced Saquon Barkley is going to run all over these guys, Dave. It's going to be a game where, remember, 16 points against the Steelers defense. I think that translates to a lot more against the Bears defensive unit. That's average, Dave. Uh, it was a nice comeback for the Bears in the fourth quarter last week. But remember, the Lions lost two members of their secondary in that fourth quarter. And there were another two members of the secondary that didn't even suit up into pads. So that was depleted defense that Trubisky took advantage of. Not that the Giants are awesome defensively, but I think they're much more healthier than what they had last week against the Lions. So I, I, And also, the Giants are just good when they go on the road. Daniel Jones especially, his road numbers, 18 touchdowns against three interceptions against eight touchdowns and 11 interceptions. I like the Giants as well. All right, of course, the Giants in Chicago here on the road. So let's head there now where we find our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. Cole is the new face of Marquee Sports Network there in Chicago, formerly with NFL Network, knows all things Bears. Cole, both guys taking the Giants and the points. Which team do you have winning on Sunday and by how many points? You know what? I can't see the Giants going into Soldier Field right off of a, a late shore drive and getting a win over the Bears. And I just can't trust Daniel Jones. We saw him with a pair of interceptions versus the Steelers, and that's not how you get it done. And even if he does limit the giveaways and Saquon comes to life after that six-yard rushing game he had, we know he's not going to go out there and lay an egg like that. He's a thousand times better than that. But 
I don't see the, the Giants being that much better versus the Bears because the Bears, they have so much momentum. They were down 17 in the fourth to Detroit. Trubisky showed that his team, they were down but not out. Three touchdowns in that fourth and final. He absolutely owns Detroit. He's, he's 4-0 versus them. He has a dozen touchdowns. So the Bears, they're going to win this one. I say 21-13. to You can count on that. All right, Bears fans, if you tail Cole and take your team to cover that five and a half point spread, a $50 winning bet on Chicago pays out more than 95 bucks. It's the FanDuel Sportsbook and the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Illinois, we're psyched to have you with us, and we are showing it. Check this out. One of the bets you can make on the FanDuel Sportsbook app is for a player to score a touchdown at any point during the game. It's called the Anytime Touchdown Score. See what we did there? Easy to find. Head to the app. Click on your game, then more wagers, and boom, it's right there. Now, if you make a wager of at least $25 on the anytime touchdown score for the Bears-Giants game specifically, you're going to get a $1 bonus for each point the Bears score in the game up to 25 bucks. It can be a player from either team, so have at it. Go to the FanDuel Sportsbook app, place a wager of at least $25 on an anytime touchdown score for the Bears-Giants game, and you will win some bonus cash. All right, let's get to Indy now and talk Colts. Home opener here in week two, hosting the Vikings on Sunday. They're giving three points here. And Colts fans, I get it. You might be worried after your tough loss in Jacksonville last week. Dave Weaver, can the Colts recover and cover this weekend at home? They can, but I like another team to recover, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. Look, they were not good last week defensively. They had some major holes against the Green Bay Packers. But here's the crazy betting stat of the week. Mike Zimmer and the Vikings are an awesome bounce-back team. The last seven times that the Vikings have lost, they've come back to cover. So they're going to play a very good game here. I think they're going to ultimately beat the Colts here. And they're also very good when they play the AFC opponent to see the 17-6 and six record against the spread. So give me the uh, Vikings plus the three. Yeah, I totally disagree. I think the Marlon Mack injury is, believe it or not, a blessing in disguise for Indianapolis because it, it gets the better running back on the field now. Jonathan Taylor was so good at Wisconsin, but he was a volume back. He needed touches. He's one of the all-time leaders in college football history in touches. And now he's going to get them in that Colts offense. I was I was blown away by how good Phillip Rivers was. 360 passing yards. Indy didn't punt. They only lost the game because they couldn't stop Gardner Minshew. They'll rebound at home and they'll cover. All right, Colts fans think Indy can cover, can rebound, as our guys think, and then cover the points in this one. It's a three-point spread. Bet on your team. A winning $50 bet gets you more than $93. It's FanDuel Sportsbook and, of course, on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And let's bring in the odds maker for the FanDuel Sportsbook right now, the guy that you're taking all of that money from, John Sheeran. John, you set the lines here. You have a lot of exclusive information into the betting market, so what I want to know from you is that we have a lot more information coming off of week one. Are there teams this week that FanDuel is taking a different view compared to what the market is saying? Absolutely, Lisa. I think one of the biggest issues from week one to two is that there tends to be a large overreaction uh, based on a sample size of one, just one game. I think that's very, very true um, around the, the points that uh, Pony made for the, the Indianapolis Colts, Lisa. Uh, we like them a little bit more than the result from uh, week one indicates. Uh, we're minus 115 on minus three on Indianapolis. Uh, a lot of the market a little bit less um, less positive on, on Indianapolis. Um, look, the, f the fact of the matter is they were unlucky to lose the game in Jacksonville. They outgained them by 200 yards in total yards um, per play, almost 1.3 yards in advance. Never punted, as Pony said as well. That's a game that they should have won. Uh, so we're going to heavily favour them over a Minnesota Vikings team who, as Dave alluded to, got a ton of junk yardage against Green Bay. OK, they're 7-0 and off the back of a loss. I don't think it's going to matter, and we really like Indy to bounce back. Uh, the other one I would offer is definitely um, the Rams and the Eagles, Lisa. We opened that at minus 3.5. That might have been very generous. The Eagles favoured by 3.5, given all the injuries that they have. Uh, that's all the way back now to 1.5. But we're, we're more positive on the Eagles than everybody else. The Rams are coming off Sunday night football, having to tra uh, tra travel across the country uh, to Philadelphia. And, and for me, that's just too much of an overreaction to what was undoubtedly a really bad Eagles uh, display, particularly on the offense. A lot of movement there, Karen. Thank you for that insight. Uh, let's put some math to our money now and get the analytics answer from our numbers guy, Eddie Gross, joining us 
from Dallas. Ed, you combed to the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You found a couple lines that you really like. Uh, let's expose them here. Where do the numbers take us, Ed? Lisa, I'm looking carefully at the Lions and Packers over 49 and a half. No matter how this game transpires, both offenses can keep up either in a close contest or an early blowout. Detroit, not as balanced, having posted a negative rushing EPA. But Matthew Stafford is unafraid, unabashed to throw it deep. He had the fourth most intended air yards with 372. There's enough depth at receiver to where Stafford won't resort to checking down too often, and that depth is only going to grow. Aaron Rodgers went vintage on us last week. 212 completed air yards, second most in football. And then his targets exploited an inexperienced Viking secondary with 152 yards after catch. Rodgers threw outside the numbers a lot, but his completion percentage over expected was outstanding, 14.25 or fourth highest. Packers will also face a Detroit secondary with a number of injuries. Too many permutations of this game give me a total in the 50s. Not only am I taking the over, I might even buy it a little bit to over 55 and a half for a plus 200 total. Yeah, I had nine of the 16 games going over in week one, uh, and that was surprising, Ed, because we all thought, you know, the time away, no preseason, you know, no fans. It was going to take some time for offenses to find a rhythm, and that really didn't pan out. And I still think that these over-unders are, 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 are deflated. They're too low with these quarterbacks and these offenses. I, I see this game going over just like you. Tony, another bet that I think has some good value here is Baltimore giving seven to Houston. I feel bad for the Texans because I think they're a solid team. In fact, I think they're the greatest 0-2 team after this weekend. They were outstanding on the ground game in week one. Second highest rush EPA in week one at .31. Credit David Johnson for that. His yards after contact per rushing attempt comes in third best at 4.1 yards. Deshaun Watson's mobility will only help that mark going forward. Ravens were not as effective running the football, but they didn't have to be. Even though Lamar Jackson felt the third highest pressure rate at 31%, he still went 9 to 10 on throws of 10 plus yards. He finished with the most completed air yards per completion at 10.1 yards. This line right now is at 7. I have the Ravens winning by 8, so be careful here. But right now, I have Baltimore covered. Uh, I don't agree. I'm going to fade you on this. Th this seems like an absurdly high line here to be going a full touchdown on the road against Houston. It's not like they're playing uh, the Jets or Jacksonville laying a touchdown. So I think the Texans cover here plus the seven. All right, fans, we'll fade Dave. Tail Ed, football fans, if you think reigning MVP uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens can cover those seven points, it is a steep line to your point, Dave. A winning $50 bet pays out just about $95. Remember to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Check out all the Week 2 lines right now. So spread, a total money line, all these wagers available for all the markets. And if that money line bet is more your jam, then roll with it. And now is the time to do it. The FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you extra cash with the score 35 double up promotion, if you place a money line bet on a week two game and your team scores more than 35 points, the FanDuel Sportsbook will double your winnings up to 50 bucks. It's the score 35 double up promotion. Find it on the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. Illinois, you're a part of the fam and we take care of our own. So this is a we've got your back segment, especially for those of you new to sports betting. Welcome. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, Dave, got to bring you in here. We've talked about spreads, money line bets and total wagers as well. Now let's break those down a little bit, inform our bettors and also give them your best bet for each here in week two. Well, sports betting is so new to Illinois. Let's just explain what all these terms uh, mean that we've been talking about. We'll start with the spread, and I'll give an example of a team that I like, uh, the Houston Texans, plus seven. That means I'm getting seven points. The spread is seven. If you take Baltimore, they have to win by eight or more. If you take the Texans, if they lose by six or less, you win. If it lands on seven exactly, both sides are going to push. So I need the Texans to lose by six or less, and I win the spread bet. Now let's talk money line. Uh, the easiest bet to me this week is to say that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win. That's exactly what a money line bet is. There's no spread involved. You're just picking the winner of the game, but you have to bet a little bit more on the favorite. The Steelers, $335 to win 100. I'm going to make that bet on the money line. And then the over under or the total is the combined points in a game between both teams. So Atlanta and Dallas, the total is 53. I love the over. It could either be 54 to nothing or 28 to 27. Either way, you add them up. And if they get more than 53, you win. 
Awesome stuff, Dave. There you go. Plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. For those of you new to betting, and again, welcome. But also a ton of fun parlays, props, and alternative lines for those of you who've been at this oh, a little while. Uh, check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app now. It is easy to use and tons of fun. Thanks for hanging with us here in week two. Time now to turn our attention to fantasy and talk about how you can turn $4 into $1 million. That's right, $1 million. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Winner gets a million bucks. The entry fee, truly just four bucks. So finding the best values, of course, to insert, in, insert into your DFS lineup is one of the keys to winning here. FanDuel Editor-in-Chief J.J. Zacharyson gives us his best values for week two. One of my favorite values here in week two is at the tight end position, and it's Logan Thomas, who's $4,700. Look, week one, Logan Thomas finished as a top 10 tight end. He ranked in the top 10 in routes run. He ranked in the top three in target share. There's a lot to like about what Logan Thomas did in week one against Philadelphia. Not a lot of alternatives in this Washington offense outside of Terry McLaurin. So Logan Thomas should be able to maintain a pretty high target share in this offense. Given the fact that he's the 24th most expensive tight end on this main slate, you have to get him into your lineup. I also like Paris Campbell, who's $5,300. He's going up against Minnesota, a team last week that gave up the most receptions and the third most yards to slot players. Paris Campbell in week one ran 95% of his routes from the slot. I think he can have a really big game and pay off that $5,300 price tag. And then finally, there's Jonathan Taylor in that same game against the Vikings. Taylor is only $5,800. Obviously, there's no Marlon Mack after he tore his Achilles. And when Marlon Mack went down in that game against Jacksonville last week, Jonathan Taylor had 10 carries to Naheem Hines' is three. And Taylor had a 13% target share in that game, which gave him six targets. I like Jonathan Taylor moving forward as a top 10 running back in fantasy football. The fact that you can get him under $6,000 this week is awesome. You've got to get him into your lineup. Awesome stuff, as always, JJ. Thank you so much. Now, make sure to use JJ's info for a shot at winning $1 million in the Sunday Million Contest on FanDuel.com. Just four bucks to enter. There's a prize pool of over $3 million. It's FanDuel.com. And there's even more money to be had. The Sunday Million is just one of many daily, daily fantasy games offered at FanDuel.com. And, of course, on the FanDuel app, there are also a bunch of free DFS contests that you can enter right now. Yes, free and a ton of fun. You can also win super legit prizes. So why not give it a try? It is free. Just log on to FanDuel.com, download the FanDuel app, sign up for your chance to win cash and prizes for free with our daily contests available each week. Let's get back to sports betting now. One of the best ways to cash in is by making a money line bet on an underdog to win the game outright. Don't have to cover the spread, just win the game. It's literally the easiest bet on the board. So let's look at these lines and place these bets with our experts. Dave Pony and Ed, hello, guys. I like to call it my money line moneymaker segment. Uh, you're welcome, America. Dave, I'm going to start with you. Give me your hottest underdog bet here for week two. Who's your money line moneymaker? I'm going with the Raiders. I thought they looked very good in winning on the road. One of the few teams, three teams in the league that didn't allow a sack in week number one. And they're going to their multi-billion dollar stadium, Allegiant Stadium, for the first time. The Rams opened up SoFi Stadium last week as an underdog and won. I don't think the Saints are going to Vegas and winning this game. Give me the plus 190 on the Raiders. You know, lost in all of the uh, Packers and Aaron Rodgers' love from last week's win over Minnesota, Dave was the fact that the Green Bay defense gave up 34 points in 24 in the fourth quarter. And that's why I'm going to take a shot on Detroit to go there. Matt Stafford now with one game under his belt. Maybe his wide receiver core gets healthy. And is Aaron Rodgers going to deliver a perfect game again? Probably not. Detroit, very much of good value play in this game. If we were to look at our power ranking uh, preseason numbers from prior to week one. I don't think Giants and Bears, I don't think uh, either of them were that much better over the other, but the Bears have a win, the Giants have a loss. We believe in law of averages, and I think it's going to go the other way in week two. Saquon Barkley will not have another bad game. Detroit, you know, some, some bad things happen to Detroit for Chicago to get back into that game. I have the Giants upsetting the Bears at plus 205. 
All right, plus 205, all that plus money. Head to the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Take a look at the odds for each matchup here in week two. See if there's a money line bet that you like. Again, picking an underdog means plus money. All right, guys, here's the deal. We're going to get back to Chicago now. Check in with our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. He's going to play some bets for us. Cole, we're going to jump ahead and talk division winners here. This is one of the team futures bets. It's still on the board here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's keep the focus on your hometown here. Let's start with the NFC North. It's a division you know well. The Bears are currently plus 270 to win this division. Which team do you think ends up taking that top spot, Cole? Uh, I don't want to get pelted with uh, eggs and rotten tomatoes as I walk down the streets of Chicago, but uh, that, that may be the case because I see the Green Bay Packers going on and winning this division. The way Aaron Rodgers is playing, I, I know that Pony doesn't think he's going to put up another perfect game versus Detroit at the house, but for the Packers to go out there, they're going to get two division wins under their belt right off the bat. They thrashed Minnesota and then a W versus Detroit. I mean, I, it's, I think it goes without saying the, the way that the Packers – have been playing and the way they will continue to play. This is their division for the taking right here, Lisa. All right, still plus money, though, with that favorite. Now let's go to the odds for the AFC South here. Focus on the Colts' chances. Indianapolis, plus 150, right behind Tennessee there. Cole, which team do you have winning this division? Uh, not the Colts. How about that one? I'm going to have to go with the Houston Texans because, as Eddie said, uh, I think he said it best, too, because the Texans, they'll be the best 0-2 team that all the NFL has to offer. I mean, I don't know who they upset in the scheduling department, but to take on KC and then Baltimore, well, that's a rough patch right there. But uh, Will Fuller and David Johnson, these guys are going to continue to roll. And J.J. Watt, he looks like his old self right now. We know that man is a three-time defensive player of the year. So the Houston Texans and Billy O, I, I see them going on and winning the South. All right, awesome stuff, Cole. Now, make, to make this bet, check out the Team Futures tab. You can bet on which team will win this division. Of course, a bunch of other Team Futures as well. It's all on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Easy, legal, live. I'm going to say it over and over and over and tons of fun with us. Don't have a FanDuel Sportsbook account? What are you waiting for? Join us now. If you sign up, FanDuel is sweetening the pot. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Yep, just download the app. Sign up for an account using that promo code right there on your screen. More ways, 1000 If your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel is going to refund you up to 1000 bucks in site credit. So let's party here, guys. Dave, Pony, Ed, my experts are joining me here for this one. You have up to 1000 bucks to place on a risk-free bet. So let's make our viewers a whole lot of money here, guys. Give me a bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook app that you are hammering that's going to lead to a big payout. Dave, what you got? Well, we're going to go to the Atlanta-Dallas game. And when you get there, there's a fun bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook that's called the alternate line or the alternate total. If you want to adjust the line and get better odds or worse odds depending on which way you go you can do that so the total in this game is 53 i'm going to buy it all the way up to 68 and a half i think this is a 10 touchdown game if this game gets to 69 or higher i'm now getting plus 600 on my thousand dollars so i get back seven grand I'm going to use my risk-free bet on Miami because Ryan Fitzpatrick, the ultimate Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde quarterback, he got the bad game out of his system in week one. He threw three interceptions against New England. Now he goes back to Miami. Fans are calling for Tua. He will respond. So my same game parlay here, a $1,000 risk-free bet to win over three grand is Miami to cover six points and for the game to go over. My crew here all believes that the NFC West is an incredibly scary division in football. Somebody good is going to get squeezed out, and to me, that's going to be the San Francisco 49ers. They will not make the playoffs. Jimmy Garoppolo, 26 in EPA CPOE composite, had the worst bad throw percentage in week one at 33.3%. George Kittle is hurt. Uh, Richard Sherman's on IR. My $1,000 risk-free bet there gets me $1,740 in profit. Tell you what, I think our odds maker is going to have a little something to say to you, Ed. Uh, hey, gamblers, make sure to sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account. You can do it right now to place uh, those bets those guys just talked about or any other bet right there on the board. There are hundreds to choose from. And remember, use that promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. Again, you lose your bet, your money's coming back. It's free, it's legal, it's live. Take your winnings if you hit. Get that money back if you don't. 
is how we roll. And I mentioned our odds maker, so I want to get him back in here. John Sheeran, they're placing those bets risk-free. What we need from you right now is your exclusive insight on the hottest bets at the sports book right now. Which teams are taking the most action for week two? Is it the Niners? Ed's Niners? He's so high on Sheeran. Spoiler alert, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> He, he likes them to miss the playoffs, and uh, nobody else has given up on them. Obviously, they threw away a good lead against Arizona in disappointing fa fashion. Uh, Richard Sherman and, and George Kittle bought it, potential injury concerns for the weekend as well. It uh, hasn't stopped anybody betting them. I think it's more to do with how bad the Jets looked. We all know that they were flattered to only lose by 10 points in Buffalo. Um, the Niners at minus 7, Lisa. I don't know if I've ever seen... Uh, as as mar a market as lopsided as this, 8,700 bets already on the Niners, just 350 on the Jets, over 95% of the money for the Niners to cover that touchdown. I would not wait on that line. If you like the Niners to, to cover against the Jets, I would be taking it sooner rather than later. And the other one's a pretty obvious one too, Lisa, the Chiefs. I think when you look at the offense of this matchup uh, this weekend, it's hard not to think that the Chiefs can blow uh, what looked a pretty anemic um, charger offense completely out of the water. I don't think any number will be big enough for customers not to take uh, Kansas on this spread. 98% of the money, even more biased than the, the Niners uh, for Kansas. And, and again, that's a line that I don't see coming back any other way than just for the Chiefs. All right, you want to, might want to text Ed on that one, Sharon, at the 98%. All right, guys, before you make your bet at the FanDuel Sportsbook, on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, of course, it's important to know how injuries may impact key players here in Week 2 in regards to the Niners and those injuries. That's what Ed referred to quite a bit. Uh, pro football doc David Chow now weighs in on all the injuries that we saw coming out of Week 1 and how that could impact play here in Week 2. It's only week two, lots of stars injured. Let's start out in San Francisco where 49ers tight end George Kittle hyperextended his left knee again. Last Halloween he did it, ended up missing two weeks. He finished the game this week, said he was fine after the game. However, he is slated not to practice at all this week. This puts Sunday into question for him. Out in Pittsburgh, James Conner has several concerns and it's really not his ankle. Mild ankle sprain, he should be fine. Benny Snell Jr. may take some snaps from him, but also the right side of the Steelers' offensive line with Zach Banner telling, tearing his ACL and the right guard being injured as well. Out in Denver, Philip Lindsay has a mild turf toe. Normally, mild is something that you can play through, but for him, it will be very difficult because of the type of running back that he is. He really relies on his speed cuts and quickness and that can be slowed down by the turf toe, even if it's mild. So we'll have to look at him and be careful with him for a couple of weeks. No doubt. That's a painful deal right there. Thank you, Dr. Chow. And the completion of week one, guys, means Super Bowl odds are moving as well. You guys see the favorites on your screen right there. But there were a few teams that played really well that may be sneaking into the Super Bowl conversation, even though it is still early. Yes, I understand it's week two. Uh, this bet is under the championship tab on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So let's make some money here, guys. Pony, who's winning this thing? Well, the Cardinals confirmed my preseason confidence with a road win at San Francisco. So I'm going to double down on them. Loved what I saw from that new Kyler Murray Larry, uh, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins with Larry Fitzgerald there as well. Don't want to count him out. So I still love the Cardinals. I'll leave the real deep sleeper long shot picks to Dave. I mean, who, no, I'm going chalk here, but who's ever going to outscore the Kansas City Chiefs? Come on. They just have way too many weapons. I love what Patrick Mahomes said after the game last week. He said, that's the best thing about this team. You never know who it's going to be. Clyde edwards helaire Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Robinson, Watkins, or maybe Patrick Mahomes just does it all himself. Nobody's beating the Chiefs. Come on. I am going to go with the Saints here. I think they have an easier road to get to the Super Bowl, and then I like their chances once they're there. I mean, you think about it, Michael Thomas wasn't a part of this offense for the most part of week one, and they still hung 34 on Tampa Bay. Even if you think Drew Brees is uh, a little long in the tooth, so to speak, they still have Taysom Hill slinging it around or running draws. Jameis Winston can also be incorporated into this offense. This defense is opportunistic. You're starting to see other guys like Emmanuel Sanders, Jared Cook, I think the Saints can be very scary at the end of the year. 
I just want to see Drew Brees' reaction to hearing you call him long in the tooth, Ed. Uh, thanks, guys. It is early in the season. There's still great value in placing a Super Bowl bet. Here's what it means in dollars and cents. A $50 bet on Ponies Cardinals. Super Bowl pick there means you would take home more than $1,700 if they win the championship. You can place your best now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And that is a wrap for us getting you guys ready to bet here in week two. Thank you so much for hanging with us this week. And as always, you've been watching FanDuel Sportsbooks more ways to win. Enjoy kickoffs this week. We'll see you right back here next week. And good luck with your bets. Say you want to learn to do that thing. Big things, small things, anything, on anything, anywhere, anyhow, anywhere. Well, as long as when means now, today's the day. Fund your account with TVG Betcash, a credit or debit card, PayPal, a TVG prepaid card, Green Dot Money Pack, or Pay Near Me. Fund your account now. TVG.com. Welcome to week two of the NFL season. You're watching More Ways to Win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, inside the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands. Thanks for hanging with us. We're excited to have you with us. And I'm joined by our team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make some money. So make sure you're ready as well. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now to place your bets with their advice. Plug in the promo code MoreWays1000. Get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy. It's legal. It's fun. So let's get this party started. They're ready. I'm ready. You're ready. And we're kicking things off, of course, with your Denver Broncos coming off that tough loss at home on Monday night against the Titans. Hey, took an L, but covered the spread for you Denver betters. That's right. Uh, your Broncos are on the road at Pittsburgh here in week two. They're getting seven and a half points in this matchup. Andrew Filippone, you're the voice, the radio voice there. <laughs> in Pittsburgh. Which way are you going on this game? Well, I'm going to stay loyal to Pittsburgh here. Uh, and hopefully Vic Fangio, maybe he would want to call a timeout on this take. But unfortunately for him, he can't. Uh, he's not with us right now. I, I love the Steelers. And the reason why I like them here is look at the pressure that they can apply to Drew Locke. Daniel Jones in week one, Giants QB, the most pressured quarterback. It resulted in three sacks and two takeaways. And I think for a young QB to face this kind of pressure, Dave, can come from anywhere, outside linebackers, corner blitzes. Uh, I don't see it translating into a lot of success. Seven and a half is a big number, but I'm confident the Steelers can hold Denver's offense at bay. Well, he wouldn't call a timeout anyways. We saw that last week. I have a future bet on him to win coach of the year. That's trash now uh, after what we saw in week number one. And the Broncos just aren't very good on the road. Much better at home. 7-19 against the spread the last 26 going away from Denver. So we have a coaching mismatch. We have a quarterback mismatch in this game. It is a big line having to lay more than a touchdown, but the, the Steelers should easily cover. All right, guys, let's get an X's and O's football take on this matchup. And for that, we head to Chicago now and our NFL analyst, Cole Wright, standing by. Cole, the new face of Marquee Sports Network, formerly of the NFL Network, of course. And Cole, both guys are taking the Steelers, giving the points. Which team do you have winning on Sunday and by how many points? Well, gentlemen, I like where you guys' thought process is at right now because the Pittsburgh Steelers, I see them going out there and getting this win because young quarterbacks in Pittsburgh – 
well, they don't tend to win, and especially if they're younger than 23 years old, and that's exactly where Drew Locke is at. He's 23, and uh, over the last 15 years, they haven't had much success when I talk about those young play callers. And plus, Denver, they, they have an issue with winning close games. We saw them lose to Tennessee with less than a minute left, and Pittsburgh, they're absolutely rolling. They look like the 2018 installment of the squad, Big Ben. He's spreading things around. We know that he was able to get in touch with eight different receivers and Juju Smith-Schuster, he went out there, and he looks to be that number one receiver that we've all been waiting for him to grow into, had a pair of touchdowns. And uh, the, the Pittsburgh defense, they're back to where they need to be at. So n never mind the fact that Jerry Judy and Melvin Gordon had good games. And uh, don't worry about the fact that uh, Ben Roethlisberger is 3-6 and six lifetime versus the Denver Broncos because they're going to absolutely roll in this one at the house, at the big catch-up bottle, 34-17. to 17. You can count on that one eight days a week. Okay, cool. Not mincing words either. Broncos fans, you do you if you bet on Denver and the points. A winning $50 bet on your Broncos gets you more than $95. That's the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Uh, let's open this thing up a little bit and look at a matchup between two AFC West teams here. The Chiefs are on the road in Los Angeles taking on the Chargers. Kansas City is giving eight and a half points on the road. It's the second biggest spread of the week. Dave Weaver, can the Chiefs cover that number away from home yeah they will I mean it's hard to set a line too big on the road but the one thing that we know about the Kansas City Chiefs when they go to LA or San Diego wherever it's been against the Chargers the last seven years they have covered so that's seven straight against the spread covers for the Kansas City Chiefs at the Chargers and then here's the crazy betting stat of the week so the Chargers won on the road last week when they come back home following a road win, only one seven and one against a spread. So add up those top two stats, and the Chiefs just look like a complete standout in this game. I'm going to go the other way here, Dave. Um, I, I look at this as a lower scoring game relative to what we're used to seeing from Patrick Mahomes, because I think the Chargers can play ball control. I was impressed by the way David Johnson ran the ball against Kansas City. I think Bill O'Brien went away from him too soon in that game. And with the Chargers combination in the backfield now of Austin Eckler and Josh Kelly, who I thought had a very solid debut against the Bengals in week one, that's the way Anthony Lynn wants to play it. Keep the ball away from uh, Patrick Mahomes. And they won't win, but I think they'll have enough success to cover the eight and a half points. All right, well, Broncos fans, you might have a little bit of fun here rooting against your rival Chiefs and making some money at the same time. Bet the Chargers and the points. And if you win a $50 bet, you're going to collect more than $95. Again, it's the FanDuel Sportsbook app. We're here and ready for you at all times. And let's bring back our odds maker here for the FanDuel Sportsbook, the guy that you're taking all of that money from, John Sheeran. John sets the lines here, has a lot of exclusive information into the betting market. So, John, we have a lot more information after week one. Are there teams this week that FanDuel is taking a different view compared to what the market is saying? Absolutely, Lisa. I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make after week one, just a sample size of one game, obviously, is an overreaction into a week two. We see Weaver. He does it all the time. Um, the Eagles and the Rams is definitely a game that we're really looking at closely. We opened the Eagles up as a three-and-a-half point favorite, and yeah, maybe that was a bit generous, and we'd like to have it back, particularly given some of the injuries that Philadelphia have. Um, but moving that line to where it went to earlier in the week as the Rams' favorite seems like a massive overreaction to us. They still have to travel across the country after Sunday night football. Yes, Carson Wentz looked uh, in a lot of pain after uh, some trouble uh, pass rush uh, over the weekend, and Aaron Donalds caused havoc on Sunday night. So with that aside, we think that there's a big overreaction there, and we'll definitely look to favor the Eagles a little bit against the market. Uh, the other one is the Colts. The Colts... Uh, lost in Jacksonville, a terrible loss, obviously, as a huge favorite. Um, but I don't think that performance was nearly as bad as the final score indicates. They outgained the Jags by 200 total yards and almost 1.4 uh, yards per play as well. So that's one that, to my mind, is a little bit misleading as well. So we'll definitely side a little bit and, and try and attract money on the other side, both on the Vikings and on the Rams, Lisa. So we'll favor those two uh, this week for sure. You know what I mean? Miss you, 19 of 20. Um, all right, Sharon, great perspective, and thank you for the insight. Uh, let's put some math to our money now. Get the analytics answer from our numbers guy, Ed Egros, joining us from Dallas. Ed, you comb the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You found a couple of lines that you really like. So let's blow things up now. Where do the um, numbers take us, Ed? 
Lisa, I know how much you love offense and points, and you will get that Monday night when the Saints and Raiders go over 49 and a half. You know about Drew Brees and Alvin Kamara, but I want to look at the role players here. Highest target share percentage for the Saints in week one actually belongs to tight end Jared Cook at 23.3%. Good for five catches for 80 yards. Second place was newly acquired Emmanuel Sanders, a 16.7% target share, three catches for 15 yards and a score. For Las Vegas, Derek Carr is tight end and BFF Darren Waller leading the Raiders with a 28.6% target share, averaging 17.9 uh, or 7.5 yards per completion. And then after that, rookie Henry Ruggs, 17.9% target share, three catches for 55 yards. But he also carried the rock twice for 11 more yards. So both offenses have new effective weapons that will be incorporated Monday night. We saw a lot of overs in week one. These totals probably need another week to, to sort of figure out where, where the water is supposed to be at its level but until that happens i'm going to see a few more overs than unders in week two and this is one of them over 49 and a half and, I, and i'm actually going to fade you here though because the implied total for new orleans i think is too high it's set at four touchdowns the michael thomas thing is a big deal this ankle injury now he's not going to play that's that's uh final emmanuel sanders step up i like him but who fills in behind him the best receiver in the NFL from a production standpoint last year, now taken away from Drew Brees. I think it hurts them in this game and keeps the, the total under. You know, Pony, another bet that I think has some good value here is Seattle giving four to the Patriots. And it's a new look offense, actually, for both teams. For the Pats, Cam Newton had 15 rushing attempts more than any quarterback last week. He also netted eight first downs on the ground more than any gunslinger in week one. Led to the highest rushing success rate of anybody at 61.9%. Seattle passed on early downs in non-garbage time, the second most frequently of anyone in football at 64%, which is absolutely shocking because A, Seattle loves to attempt to establish the run. And then also, you know, they're stubborn about that. But then also, Seattle was in control for most of the game they didn't have to pass it as often but they still did if seattle still buys into passing it a good bit more letting russ cook i think the seahawks beat the patriots by at least a touchdown ed what are you doing two out of your three bullet points there are saying how good cam newton and the patriots are and you're getting four points i thought that he fit really well into the Belichick system i liked what i saw defensively i thought they weren't going to be very good in week number one losing a lot of players this year they look great on both sides of the ball and i'm getting four points i'm going to fade you here give me the patriots i'm going to tail ed here russell wilson for the win his qb rating in week one 143.1 what a performance and if you also like seattle giving the points in this matchup a winning 50 dollars bet on the seahawks will pay out more than 95 dollars and placing your bet is so easy download the FanDuel sportsbook app check out all the week two lines available right now plug in that promo code more ways 1000 so spread total money line all these wagers available for all the markets and if you like that money line bet think that's more your jam then roll with it and now's the time to do it the FanDuel Sportsbook is giving you extra cash with the score 35 double up promotion if you place a money line bet on a week two game and your team scores more than 35 points the FanDuel Sportsbook will double your winnings up to 50 bucks it's the score 35 double up promotion find it right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app Colorado, you are a part of the fam and we take care of our own. So this is a we've got your back segment, especially for those of you new to sports betting. Welcome. We're excited you are here with us. And Dave, we've talked about spreads, money line bets and total wagers as well. Now let's break those down here, inform our betters and also give them your best bet for each here in week two. What you got? Well, there are a lot of people that have been betting sports for a long time, but plenty of those in Colorado are very new to this, so they want to learn everything that we're talking about. So let's start with three very easy bets. We'll start with the spread bet. That is the amount of points that a team has to win by. So the Baltimore Ravens, the spread is seven against the Texans. I like the Texans, so if they lose by six points or less, I'm going to win. If they lose by seven, it would be a tie. So the spread bet for me would be the Texans plus the seven. Now let's talk money line. 
there is no spread involved in a money line bet. You're just simply saying who is going to win the game. Let's use the Pittsburgh Steelers as an example. That's the easiest winner of the week to me. So I'm going to say that the Steelers win this game. I have to bet a little bit more. Minus 335 means you have to bet $335 to win 100. If you bet the Broncos, you bet 100, you win 270. The spread doesn't matter. Now let's talk about the total or the over-under. That's the combined amount of points in the game that the two teams need to score. Dallas and Atlanta, I love the over, 53 points. So it could either be 54 to nothing or 28 to 27. Either way, you add them up, and that's the over-under or the total, and I like the over. There you go. Plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Thank you, Dave. And for those of you new to betting, hey, all that information you can take it and plug it in right now. Also, a ton of fun parlays, props, and alternative lines for those of you who have been at this a little while. Check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app now. It's easy to use and tons of fun. Time now to turn our attention to fantasy and talk about how you can turn $4 into $1 million. That's right, $1 million. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Winner gets a million bucks. The entry fee, just $4. Now, finding the best values to insert into your DFS lineup is, of course, one of the keys to winning. FanDuel editor-in-chief J.J. Zacharyson gives us his best values for week two. One of my favorite values here in week two is at the tight end position, and it's Logan Thomas, who's $4,700. Look, week one, Logan Thomas finished as a top 10 tight end. He ranked in the top 10 in routes run. He ranked in the top three in target share. There's a lot to like about what Logan Thomas did in week one against Philadelphia. Not a lot of alternatives in this Washington offense outside of Terry McLaurin, so Logan Thomas should be able to maintain a pretty high target share in this offense. Given the fact that he's the 24th most expensive tight end on this main slate, you have to get him into your lineup. I also like Paris Campbell, who's $5,300. He's going up against Minnesota, a team last week that gave up the most receptions and the third most yards to slot players. Paris Campbell in week one ran 95% of his routes from the slot. I think he could have a really big game and pay off that $5,300 price tag. And then finally, there's Jonathan Taylor in that same game against the Vikings. Taylor is only $5,800. Obviously, there's no Marlon Mack after he tore his Achilles. And when Marlon Mack went down in that game against Jacksonville last week, Jonathan Taylor had 10 carries to Naheem Hines' three. And Taylor had a 13% target share in that game, which gave him six targets. I like Jonathan Taylor moving forward as a top 10 running back in fantasy football. The fact that you can get him under $6,000 this week is awesome. You've got to get him into your lineup. Awesome stuff. Great value there, JJ. Uh, make sure to use JJ's information now for a shot at winning $1 million. It's the Sunday Million Contest available right now on the FanDuel.com. Just four bucks to enter. There's a prize pool of over $3 million. And there's even more money to be had. The Sunday Million is just one of many daily fantasy games offered at FanDuel.com and on the FanDuel app. There are also a bunch of free DFS contests that you can enter right now. Yes, free. And, of course, a ton of fun. You can also win super legit prizes, so why not give it a try? Just log on to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Sign up for your chance to win cash and prizes for free with our daily contests available each week. Let's get back to sports betting now. And one of the best ways to cash in is by making a money line bet on an underdog to win the game outright. Don't have to cover the spread. Just win the game. It's literally the easiest bet on the board. So let's take a look at these lines and place these bets with our experts. Hey, guys, Dave Pony and Ed. I like to call this my money line money maker. Yes, America, you're welcome. Dave, I'm going to start with you. Give me your hottest underdog bet for week two. Who's your money line money maker? I'm going to go with the Raiders. I mean, here's a team that won very nicely on the road last week. They're coming home. It's the debut of Allegiant Stadium, their $2 billion stadium. I think they're going to be fired up to win this game. Yes, they were expecting to have 65,000 fans, and that's not going to happen. But still, same thing happened in Los Angeles with the Rams winning at SoFi Stadium last week. I think the Raiders represent Las Vegas and get the win at plus 190. Yeah, I'm going to take the Lions because there's a ton of value here at plus 220. You know, if DeAndre Swift holds on to the ball, this is a matchup of 1-0 teams. It's not, I understand that, but Detroit was the better team against Chicago. They passed my eye test. And for Green Bay, you know, this narrative now that Aaron Rodgers is motivated by the Jordan Love pick, and 
that's better for the Packers than the wide receiver or running back they could have taken in, or tight end they could have taken in the first round. I'm not buying it. Great game, great debut for Rodgers, but he'll come back down to earth in week two. Everyone needs to stop hating on the G-men. I think they can take care of business against the Bears. What happened to Saquon Barkley Monday night was shocking. He had the fifth worst rushing yards over expected of any running back in football. That is not going to happen again. The Bears only stormed back to beat the Lions because of major defensive injuries to Detroit. Chicago was forced to throw a lot. Things worked out for them. I don't think that happens again. The Giants upset, upset the Bills, uh, Bears rather, at plus 205. <laughs> and making friends here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowland. Thanks, guys. Uh, all that plus money. Head to the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Take a look at the odds for each matchup. See if there's a money line bet that you like. Picking an underdog, remember, means plus money. All right, guys, let's back, get back to Chicago now and check in with our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. Cole, let's jump ahead and let's make a little money talking division winners here. This is one of the team futures bets still on the board here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, let's keep it focused on the Denver market there. That means the AFC West. Chiefs are heavy favorites to win this division. Any chance any other team ends up on top at the end of the year? No, oh, there's zero chance any other team in that division ends up on top at the end of the season because of what Kansas City is able to do right now, I mean, it's, it's next level. Like Dave said, this team is unstoppable. When Patrick Mahomes, when he's locked in, I mean, there's a reason, you know, he was won an MVP, he's won a Super Bowl, and I think this guy, his book, it's far from being done written yet. And uh, I, I just think that this Kansas City team, there's so many different weapons, and when he utilizes them, it's dangerous for all the opposition. Uh, seven receivers involved in week one, and I think we're going to see more of that because the Chargers, they present 0% of a problem when it comes to week two, Lisa. Odds on favorite for a reason, Cole. Another fun futures yep. bet here is picking the conference champion. Let's focus on the AFC here. Ravens and Chiefs both tied as heavy favorites. Cole, do the Chiefs make it back to the Super Bowl again? Or do you see another AFC team represent the conference? What do you think? Well, I like KC at plus 260 because I see this team absolutely rolling once again. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, he's recently engaged. He just had a birthday with a Coors Light case of beer as the cake. And, you know, he's also right on the doorstep of passing up Kurt Warner as the quickest quarterback to 10,000 passing yards. Just needs just under 370 yards. And Patrick Mahomes, he's the best week two passer in the modern era since 1970 averaging just under 385 yards so if the numbers tell me anything i see this kansas city team playing once again for vince lombardi trophy they're going to be taking on russell wilson and the seattle seahawks that's where i'm standing at boom and cole yes patrick mahomes is literally living the definition of living your best life <laughs> to make these bets check out the team futures tab you can bet on which team will win the division and of course a bunch of other team futures it's all on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now moving on here easy legal live tons of fun with us of course wait ho oh, you say you don't have a FanDuel Sportsbook account yet what are you waiting for? Come on, team. If you sign up now, FanDuel is sweetening the pot. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Yes, download the app. Sign up for an account. Use that promo code on your screen. More ways, 1000 If your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel is going to refund you up to 1000 bucks in site credit. So I say let's party and let's bet that $1,000. Dave Pony, Ed, you have up to 1000 bucks to place on a risk free bet. Let's make our viewers some money here. Give me a bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook app that you are hammering that's going to lead to a big payout. Dave, you first. Where are you placing that $1,000? Well, my best bet of the week is going to be the over in the Atlanta-Dallas game. Now, I can take that $1,000 and bet the over 53 at minus 110 and pick up a little bit less than $1,000 in profit. But I'm greedy, and I'm not going to do that because I think that this is a 10-touchdown game. I think this game gets into the 70s, and guess what? You can take advantage of that opinion by buying the total up. So I'm going to go over 68 and a half at plus 600 odds, and I'd get back 7,000 for my 1,000. Dave can't go a whole show without mentioning the Falcons. It's unbelievable. This is pet team this year. Okay, I get it. Uh, I'm going to go with this one. Such a flip, right? Because Buffalo got to play the Jets at home. That's easy. 
Miami had to go to New England in week one. So now those two teams square off the Bills and Dolphins, and it won't be easy for, for, for Buffalo with Ryan Fitzpatrick, the former Bills quarterback. Same game parlay here. This is what I like. Miami to cover at home. Fitzpatrick playing for his job with Tua behind him. And the over hitting Fitzpatrick three interceptions last week. He'll rebound. A thousand dollar risk free wager wins me over three grand. What is the opposite of a pet team that you don't like in terms of uh, saying they're not going to make the playoffs? Well, that's me and the San Francisco 49ers. We need to be honest about Jimmy Garoppolo here. Last week, he faced an average Arizona defense, and he finished 26th out of 32 quarterbacks in EPA CPOE composite. He had the worst bad throw percentage at 33.3%. George Kittle is hurt. Richard Sherman's on IR. They're running out of weapons in San Francisco. My $1,000 risk-free bet gets me $1,740 in profit. Ed, you know our director, Doug DeLomo, just uh, unfriended you on Facebook after that take. Huge Niners fan. Uh, for all of you gamblers, make sure to sign up right now for our FanDuel Sportsbook account. Place your bet with our experts advice remember use that promo code more ways 1000 to get your risk-free bet up to one thousand dollars it's easy it's legal it is live right now take your winnings if you hit get your money back if you don't because that is how we roll we appreciate you betting with us and hanging with us we appreciate being part of the fam good stuff guys uh, john sheeran they're placing those bets risk-free and what we need from you right now is your exclusive insight into the hottest bets at the sports book right now so which teams are taking the most action here in week two not the most surprising, Lisa. I think there's two offenses that look like they're matching up against two really poor offenses, particularly off the back of week one when you look at the Jets and the Niners first. Um, the Niners are favored by a touchdown, Lisa. To this point, it's the only money I've seen has been for San Francisco. Nearly 9,000 bets on the Niners to cover the spread and just 350 uh, for the Jets shows you the, how lopsided this book is. It's one of the most lopsided books I think I've ever seen. Uh, no interest in whatsoever in the Jets plus seven. And that's hardly surprising given their performance in Buffalo last week. They only lost by 10 points, probably should have lost by more than 21. Uh, so not surprising to see the bias of money that we are there. The other one is the Chiefs. Lisa, the Chiefs offense looked awesome. It looked like there was no offseason whatsoever. The Chargers, on the other hand, really struggled against a, you know, what we expected to be a relatively weak Cincinnati team. Uh, 95%, 98% of the money in that game has come for Kansas, eight and a half right now. Can't see that line getting any, any more favorable. So if you do like the Chiefs and the Niners to cover, I would suggest you take them sooner rather than later. Awesome stuff, Sheeran. Thank you for the insight. And before you make your bet at the FanDuel Sportsbook here in New Jersey or on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, it's so easy. I bet it is important to know how injuries it may impact key players here in Week 2. Pro Football Doc David Chow takes a look at some of the big names who are playing hurt and how those injuries could affect their play this weekend. It's only week two, lots of stars injured. Let's start out in San Francisco where 49ers tied in. George Kittle hyperextended his left knee again. Last Halloween he did it, ended up missing two weeks. He finished the game this week, said he was fine after the game. However, he is slated not to practice at all this week. This puts Sunday into question for him. Out in Pittsburgh, James Conner has several concerns and it's really not his ankle. Mild ankle sprain, he should be fine. Benny Snell Jr. may take some snaps from him, but also the right side of the Steelers' offensive line with Zach Banner telling, tearing his ACL and the right guard being injured as well. Out in Denver, Philip Lindsay has a mild turf toe. Normally, mild is something that you can play through, but for him, it will be very difficult because of the type of running back that he is. He really relies on his speed cuts and quickness and that can be slowed down by the turf toe, even if it's mild. So we'll have to look at him and be careful with him for a couple of weeks. That's a painful injury. Thank you for the insight, Doc. And the completion of week one, guys, means Super Bowl odds are moving. You guys see the favorites there on your screen. Uh, but there were a few teams that played really well in week one that may be sneaking into the Super Bowl conversation, even though it is still early, I admit that. Uh, this bet is right now under the championship tab on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So let's make some money here. Pony, who is winning the Super Bowl? Yeah, I think some of the analysts are starting to come around to my thinking, uh, Lisa. I liked Arizona before the season. I felt vindicated when they beat San Francisco. 
The world is starting to take notice of Kyler Murray. He is a legitimate MVP threat and a quarterback good enough to get the Cardinals to a Super Bowl win. Well, if the Cardinals were in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, they would give up 70 points. The Chiefs just have way too much offense for anybody in this league. They're only plus 550, but I think they are completely unstoppable. Way too many offensive weapons for Patrick Mahomes. Nothing is keeping me from staying with my New Orleans Saints. Even if you think Drew Brees is a little bit washed up, perhaps, Taysom Hill can still throw it, run draws on his own. And even Jameis Winston could potentially be incorporated into this offense a little bit. Sean Payton, the most innovative mind in all of the National Football League. He's going to get creative, potentially, with a third quarterback. Defense is opportunistic. They'll take him the Saints. Yes, great stuff, guys. It is early in the season, and there's still great value in placing a Super Bowl bet, however. Here is what it means in dollars and cents. $50 bet on Ponies Cardinals Super Bowl pick means you would take home more than $1,700. You can place that bet. Of course, hundreds more right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Hey, guys, welcome to week two. Appreciate you hanging with us today. You've been watching FanDuel Sportsbooks. More ways to win. We'll see you right back here next week. Enjoy the games, and good luck with your bets. TVG account holders get free PPs. At TVG.com, under the Handicapping tab, select Free Past Performances. International Racing is displayed on the right. Select the track and the day for a full card. For U.S. tracks, access TVG Full PPs, Basic PPs, Watch and Wager PPs, the Stats Race Lens Day Pass, and TVG Super 8 PPs. Select Handicapping Store and play today to get reimbursed the very next day. Free PPs at TVG.com.